Now time for members' statements. A member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Mr. Speaker, this is about the petition of right, which has been our topic of today, and for the people that are here as guests to see this be done. The property owners of Godreach Township want to de-amalgamate from the amalgamated municipality of Central Huron in Huron County. They have chosen the petition of right, an ancient law from 1628, as the instrument to restore their right to determine their own self-governance. The property owners of Godridge Township pay about 60% of the total property tax bill for the, for the amalgamated township of Huron Central, but none of this money is spent on capital projects in Godridge Township. The people of Godridge Township are unhappy and they want out. The Petition of Right of 1628 was used by common people to have the King or Parliament correct a wrong. The people would take a petition signed by a legal majority of the people that defined the wrong and defined what right should be done and presented this Petition of Right to the King or Parliament. And the King or Parliament was bound to say, let right be done. This was the law then, this is the law now. So I say to this House and the Crown and the people of Goderich, let right be done. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, yet again, we've approached that season where we have lots of snow coming down on our highways across the province of Ontario, and uh, people are starting to be concerned about the conditions of roads yet again. I appreciate and I respect that the government has tried to move somewhat on this issue uh, by increasing the number of uh, vehicles, or not vehicles, the number of plows that are on our highways, uh, but we all know that we're still about 400 plows short to what we used to have when MTO was responsible for plowing our highways. That means highways in your community, highway, highways in my communities, and across this province are being plowed at a less frequent, uh, at a less frequent rate uh, than they were before. I've yet again got phone calls this morning in my constituency office in regards to condition of our roads. Uh, people are recognizing that the roads are not being maintained to the degree that they used to before. So I have a very simple point that I want to make here and a very simple request that I want to make to the minister. Our roads are in worse condition than they ever have been before, and we're calling on this government to do the right thing. You've got to do two things. You've got to include inside the current area maintenance contracts the circuit times that used to be in those contracts before that allowed our roads to be in a better position, uh, condition as far as, as far as plowing. And we need to increase the amount of equipment that we're using on our highways in order to make sure that the highways across this province are safe for everyone to travel. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Northumberland, Quincy West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's my honour, it's an honour for me to for me to speak today about an outstanding restaurant in my riding on Thumberland Community West. The social bar and table in Port Hope has been designated with the Ontario Tourism Alliance Feast Ontario program. This designation is awarded to applicants who purchase a, at least 25% of their food and beverage from Ontario producers. They must also commit to participate in local food events and partner with local food and beverage providers. The social bar and table buys over 55% of their products from Ontario suppliers. I'm thrilled that they are one of five restaurants chosen to participate today at Queen's Park at the 2014 Premier Summit in Agricultural Food Innovation. The social bar and table will be showcasing local products from Linwood Acres Trout, Burnham Family Farm Apples, and Northgate Organic Produce. Please take time to stop by the Agri-Food Summit reception later on this afternoon downstairs, which focuses on Ontario finest producers and demonstrate how important it is to buy local and know where our products are coming from. The social bar and table is located at 26 Ontario Street in Port Hope. Please stop by when you're in the riding. And don't forget, good things grow in Ontario. Okay. 
Member statements. The member for Lambton Kent Middlesex. Thank you, Speaker. I'm delighted to rise today to congratulate the Federation of Philippine Chinese in Ontario on celebrating their 25th anniversary. This is a non-profit organization that works tirelessly on behalf of the Philippine Chinese community with the goal of preserving their unique traditions while putting down roots here in our province. They promote wonderful cultural and recreational events throughout the province, including holiday traditions, sports leagues, and youth events. They also offer support to new Canadians, assisting with communication, socialization, and helping them to integrate into their new communities. I was lucky enough to attend the Moon Festival celebrations held by the FPCO in September. And Mr. Speaker, I was blown away by what a vibrant and engaged community they have and by the warm welcome I received. Tomorrow night, they will be celebrating their 25th anniversary with a Christmas party. So I want to join with the friends and supporters of the FPCO in commending the dedicated service which has built and sustained a thriving community environment for the Philippine Chinese in Ontario. So again, congratulations on a milestone anniversary. I'm sure it's just one milestone of many to come. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member uh, from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm always proud to stand in this house and to have the opportunity, which quite frankly, not many are able to enjoy. Today, I have to say I'm thankful to be standing here today to speak about the wonderful city that I live in and also enjoy. I'm a proud Hamiltonian speaker, and I quite frankly have been my entire life. I have always been the person to jump at the chance to support a city gathering, a parade, or the torch run that ran through my city. I have always been eager to show up at the rallies or engagements that showcase our city and cheer on our teams. Speaker, as you're aware, Hamilton was very successful last weekend. McMaster Marauders won the Mitchell Bowl, sending them to this Saturday's Vanier Cup, where they will be to face Montreal University. The Marauders were Vanya Cup champions in 2011, finalists in 2012, and I know they're looking forward to bringing that victory home this year. Then there are our Tiger Cats, Speaker, and I have to say I'm rallied and I'm excited and I am so looking forward to Sunday's game. On Saturday, we won the Eastern Final, and on Sunday, we will be playing in the 102nd Grey Cup. I've been attending the game since I was a child speaker. I remember being a little kid sitting in the stands with my family and watching the game. This season has been no different. I did my best to be at as many games as I could. My brother and I are both season ticket holders, and many a game we shared bringing our dad or our nephew or really just spending time with our spouses at the games. Whoever I was with was okay with me, as long as I was cheering on my team and having a good time, rain or shine. I can't believe I'm out of time already, Speaker, but I just have to say, go Cats, go, Oski Wee Wee, Hamilton will be cheering you on, and I know you're going to bring it home. Thanks, Speaker. Far be it from me to cut off Oski Wee Wee. <laughs> Is the member from Burlington. Mr. Speaker, Oski Wee Wee indeed. Uh, I rise in the House today, Speaker, to recognize the extraordinary work of the Burlington Public Library, and in particular, a wonderful organization that I had the privilege of learning about when I toured our library recently, the Centre for Equitable Library Access. The CELA is a national non-for-profit organization established by Canadian public libraries to provide equitable public library services for Canadians with print disabilities. Our Burlington Public Library is a member of this wonderful national organization, providing print-disabled residents in my riding of Burlington with access to published material in accessible formats. The ability to hold or manipulate a book can impairment to reading comprehension, severe or total impairment of sight or the inability to focus or move one's eyes are a few examples of disabilities that prevent print disabled residents from accessing conventional print. For the 10% of Canadians who have a print disability, access to reading materials in alternate formats such as braille, audio or described video is often an ongoing challenge. With help from the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, digital accessible formats of published material are being produced for visually impaired and print-disabled residents, and my public library is serving as an accent point. 
The Center for Equitable Library Access makes it possible for print-disabled residents to gain easy access to a wealth of published materials in formats of their choice, right in their own communities through their public library. And Speaker, I'm so pleased to say, uh, to stand in my place today, rather, and salute our Burlington Public Library for this wonderful and enjoyable and accessible program. Speaker, here, here. thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Huron. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today is a good day when we celebrate excellence in Ontario's agri-food industry. But I'd also like to remind the House that earlier this year, the Premier challenged this very same industry to double its growth rate and create 120,000 new jobs by 2020. Years ago, when I was vice chair of Ontario Agri-Food Education, Laurie Jokas, the current chair, projected Ontario's agri-food industry would have jobs without people. And sadly, that's our reality today. First of all, I would like to congratulate the University of Guelph as well as the Food and Beverage Ontario for recently announcing their action plan to address this. Indeed, a new generation must be interested and enthused to pursue post-secondary education focused on primary agriculture and the agri-food sector. But the question is, when should this interest be fostered? And the industry has already indicated that current, the current number of students in post-secondary education will not meet their future employment needs. And educational stakeholders are telling me some of their programs are going not completely filled. This all indicates that we need to promote careers in Ontario's agri-food sector to youth at a timely manner. And I would suggest, Speaker, that you will find in the order papers today, I've introduced a resolution that would encourage the government to include a mandatory agri-food component of career opportunities in grade 9 and 10 guidance and career education by supporting Ontario agri-food education. The industry at large has already invested in educational material. Now it's time to put it to use. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, a week ago, 7,000 young people crammed into the Kitchener Auditorium. There was music, there was a glitzy light show, and a lineup of famous people. But this was more than just a rock concert. Kitchener hosted We Day. It's a day-long event which encourages young people to care about global issues. The elementary and the high school students who were invited to the event all helped to raise funds for Free the Children, and this was their reward. Since 2007, young people across Canada have raised $45 million for more than 1,000 local and global causes. <laughs> Captain Richard Phillips, who was portrayed by Tom Hanks in a movie about the 2009 hijacking of his ship, told the students that attitude will always impact results. Mr. Speaker, I had a chance to see this in action a few years ago when I visited a camp in West Kenya while producing a TV documentary on a group of high school students from my region. After fundraising for two years, they traveled to this remote area and they helped build a school. They installed a water collection project and they were there to learn practical ways to mitigate poverty and hunger. They built the school, they provided young people there uh, a very positive uh, and good change for them. So uh, We Day is more than just a one-day event. The messages that they hear empowers them to find their passion and to live by example the kinds of changes that they want to see in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising today to showcase a fantastic organization in my riding of Davenport. Every day I'm struck by the generosity of our fellow citizens, and nowhere is that generosity of character more apparent than at the Davenport Perth Neighbourhood and Community Health Centre. Mr. Speaker, for nearly 30 years, the Davenport Perth Neighbourhood and Community Health Centre has tirelessly worked to promote the health and social well-being of the West Toronto community with broad range of programs. Programming. From the preschool program and other services at the Ontario Early Years Centre to the Youth Leadership Project for teenagers all the way to computer training for seniors, the centre really provides something for everyone. And these programs may make a huge difference in the lives of my constituents. The centre's new Here for Youth initiative launched last week, and it will fit right in among the roster of fantastic services. Here for Youth is a youth-led program that aims to empower young people between the ages of 13 and 24 in the West Toronto area. 
A team of young researchers are engaging their peers through a number of means in order to figure out what prevents the city's youth from accessing sexual and mental health services. It's an important question, and Here for Youth is a great program model. The initiative, which was funded by an Ontario Trillium grant, not only explores a, pre uh, a pressing question but also offers a chance for young people to develop their research and community engagement skills. Last week, I was delighted to attend Here for Youth's community fair at the Davenport Perth Centre, and I'm happy to report that it was a successful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It is now time.